Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how simple it is to get started with API 3's DAPI price feeds. With just a few lines of codes that you see here, you'll be able to generate any token price that's available in our marketplace. It doesn't require any token, it just costs a little bit of gas. And just like that, you'll be able to receive the data feed of the price token that you're requesting and the timestamp of when it was generated. This is very simple to do. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with an empty Remix workspace. We're gonna go ahead and create a .sol file. We'll call it pricefeed.sol. We're going to paste down our license identifier and our pragma version. Just to note for this example, we're using Solidity version 0.8.19 to make sure that every chain that you deploy to works. If the chain that you're using supports the Shanghai fork, you can use 0.8.20 and above. Let's go ahead and set up our contract. We'll call our contract API3 price feed. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a global variable to set our contract to read a certain price feed. We'll have an address, we'll make it public for this example, and we'll call it proxy address. This will be the price feed address that we're going to set our contract to if we want ETHUSD, RATBTC, or any other asset. We're going to create our function to let our smart contract know what price feed we want so we can update it anytime. So we'll have function, set proxy address, and then we'll set it to a local variable, address, proxy address. We'll make this public. And then we're just gonna set our global variable with this variable here on the function. So proxy address to proxy. Excellent. So now what we wanna do is make our smart contract read the function. What we're gonna to need to do is import a library from API 3. This is just an import for interfaces. It is not an inheritance, so you don't have to update your contract with a contract is. It is just to make your developer experience easier. So now that we have this interface proxy available to us, we can go ahead and set up our second function. We'll say that function, and we'll call it read data feed. And we'll make this external view because it doesn't update the state, and it returns two values. First one is an int 224 value, which is our price, and a UN 256 timestamp of when the price feed was generated. Now what we want to do is set those values. And we'll set them into our proxy interface by a proxy. And we want to set it to the proxy address that we updated our smart contract to. It'll be the proxy address. And then we will read it. Our smart contract is just about ready to be deployed, but there's one minor thing I want to point out. Our set proxy address is public, meaning anybody can update the price feed. It would ruin our smart contract if anybody could change the price feeds on the fly. So we want to go ahead and limit that to only the owner of the contract. So we're going to go ahead and import the ownable library from Open Zeppelin. I'm going to go ahead and paste that down. Since we are using Solidity version 8.19 on Remix, we want to make sure that we import 4.93 on our Open Zeppelin to make sure it's compatible. Now that we have it imported, we're going to go ahead and set the inheritance is ownable. Now we can use the modifier in our function to own the owner. Now our contract is ready to deploy. We're going to go ahead and make sure it compiles. I have it in auto compile, but just to make sure we have 8.19 and we are ready to deploy. We're going to drop down and use our injective provider. Currently we are on Isopolia and we're ready to deploy. Our contract has been deployed. As we scroll down, we can see it here. We can see our set proxy address and our read data feed and the functions brought in by the ownable library. Before a smart contract can read the data feed, we have to let the smart contract know which feed we want. We head over to market.api3.org, we can pick our feed. Here you can see all the chains that we support and their equivalent test nuts. Here we're going to head over to eSapolia. We're going to search for ETHUSD. Currently you see ETHUSD is not activated, so we're going to go ahead and activate it. We're going to connect our wallet. And begin the activation process. Let's click on activate. And for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to stick to 1% deviation. Scroll down. 
and purchase the ETHOSD price feed. It is good for seven days on testnet. Once the transaction has gone through, we can check the details. We can see that the price feed is live and ready to go. We can check the different aggregation price feeds that they have available to us to make sure that we're getting our specific price feed. And we want to integrate this into our smart contract. Right here is the proxy address that we want to use for our Ethopolia testnet. I'm going to grab the smart contract address. And below is just a smart contract example of what we've been working on currently. I'm going to go back to my contract and I'm going to set my address to the ETHUSD price feed. Once our transaction is confirmed, our price feed now is now set, so we can now read the data feed. And you can see that we have $3,501 with the timestamp of when it was last updated to verify that against the market. We'll go back. $3,501. And that's how you get your price feed from API 3. Thank you.